Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Dr. Iman. Uh, this is uh, our second episode in the series of uh, Art and War. Uh, last one, we spoke about Art and War generally, uh, men of Srebrenica. Today, yeah. we will speak about White Arm Band. White Arm Band in the recent history. I am Imane Tahawi, I am a cardiology consultant, and I started uh, a genocide research. Lastly, uh, in Europe from 1939 to 1945, they started to impose wearing certain patches and bands according to a certain population, mainly Jews, uh, year by year uh, from uh, occupied Poland uh, uh, to Bulgaria, passing f from uh, France, occupied parts of France, Bulgaria, uh, and the USSR. Some physicians are forced to wear a certain uh, patches and this is a discrimination. Uh, this is a early an early stage of genocide. They discriminate people, differentiate males from females and the children, and going to concentration camps. One of the famous books is a medical student's journal, journal written by John Hargrave, and uh, it is uh, published by Imperial College Press. In 1992, after 50 years in Bredor, they started this discrimination as early as September 1991, according to the ICTY. Here is children and females. And uh, yeah. some witness described uh, what happened in this White House. Uh, uh, she described a sexual abuse day by day, young, old, whatever. That is one of the horrible events happened during ethnic cleansing, which is a stage of genocide. And I insist on telling that concentration camp. This is not 1940, it is 1992. They are almost skin on bone. Their vertebral column is obvious to us. And this is marks of ecchymosis and bruises for some victims. These pictures are taken in secret. And this is the housing or concentration camps from ICTY report. Where is the world. The world was celebrating, and the Daily Mirror said two faces. One uh, mother is uh, from Bosnia, and the other royal family. The world was absent from what is going on, and may, they may know what happened, but they didn't interfere well or stop further ethnic cleansing and uh, atrocities. They destroyed uh, uh, holy places, whether uh, mosques or uh, non-Orthodox uh, uh, Catholic uh, churches. Some uh, houses are occupied, and they started to expel them and mark the houses with white painting or white blanket or whatever white mark. And this is a mosque destroyed. This is a mosque, they are praying in fear, just five persons from this uh, uh, town. So the world is silent. This is Fikret, uh, one of the famous uh, prisoners. This is a, a brave journalist from UK. And his, this is Fikret, he is very thin here and almost a, a different view after almost 20 years. They um, tried to uh, hide what happened, ig ignoring and denial. It should be opposed by a culture of remembrance. So people in Bredor start and they try to remember their victims and enforce the world, at least the European countries or their country, to make uh, some um, events like White Arm Band Day. 
uh, welcome uh, my guest, Sir Robert McNeil. He's a member of British Empire. He is a UNESCO artist, uh, a chair of uh, refugee, uh, integration of refugees through art and uh, language. He's ambassador of Remembering Srebrenica UK, and he's, uh, of course, a former uh, forensic technician, and I'm honored to work with him. Uh, welcome, sir. Well, thank you, Iman. That's very kind of you. It's, um, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Uh, I will ask you to uh, tell us about uh, this uh, painting. Yes, well, uh, this painting is called White Armband. And as you said uh, previously, you've given a very good description of what happened in the Priador area. Um, I first started working with victims from concentration camps in 1997. Um, and then uh, I, that continued to into the further into the Priador area, um, where uh, Omarska, Keraterm uh, camps were in Thermopylae. And the painting uh, was actually inspired by a friend of mine called Elvira Mukanovic, who uh, who was uh, as a teenager was was um, captured by the Serbians. Um, they were the family were thrown out of their home, um, and they were forced to wear white armbands because all non-Serbs in the Priador area were told to identify themselves, um, and of course a white armband uh, that denoted them as being non-Serbs. Uh, and so the painting, as I say, was inspired by Elvira because of her story, which is. Quite a, an amazing story, really. She was incarcerated in Ternopoli concentration camp. Um, her then fiance Jasmine, uh, he was taken to three camps: Ternopoli, Omarska, and Keraterm camps. And they thought that they would never see one another again. In fact, they believed that each of them had been killed by the Serbs. But fortunately. Um, they, they survived and uh, they came to Scotland. They managed to escape to Scotland where they now live. Um, and so in the painting, you'll see a family or a woman and two children um, all wearing white armbands uh, and have described why that was the case. In the background, you'll see some buildings uh, and uh, including in those those buildings is the infamous Omarska camp. Um, and the, the main building that are featured in the painting is was known as the White House. The White House uh, was a terrible place where men and women were taken daily uh, to be beaten. Um, women and men were sexually violated. And uh, and many of them were killed. Indeed, up to 150 people were killed every day and night in this terrible place. Um, and so the the painting uh, in the painting you'll see the the mother figure, the woman. Um, you have to look quite closely, but she's she's cradling a photograph, a smashed photograph of her family, her husband. Her, her, uh, her two children and her because uh, after being ethnically cleansed, they were taken from their homes uh, uh, and were thrown out of their homes with virtually nothing. They had no belongings that they could take. The Serbs had stolen everything from them. And you'll see in their expressions, they look very sad. The smaller child um, is looking just frightened and confused. He, he doesn't understand what's going on. Um, and the mother then is faced with trying to find a place of safety um, for her and her children in the knowledge that she may never see her, her husband again. And so that's what inspired the painting. Okay, good description and uh, marvelous uh, painting. Uh, uh, may I uh, ask some questions for you? Yes, certainly. 
Okay. Uh, I, 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 I flooded my vision and uh, read a lot about uh, what happened and, uh, and found uh, this painting summarizing what happened really. Uh, and uh, uh, the aisle is uh, the gaze and the way of looking uh, described uh, a lot. Uh, I, I could uh, see their eyes are almost, uh, uh, when, when we look at uh, this one, you see this man, I think he's telling a story. The, the boy is telling a story. He's, uh, he's telling us what happened really, but as you said, uh, by um, uh, he's, he doesn't know what happened and he's afraid. And also the mother is, uh, is, is looking for a future. Her look is, is telling that. Okay, uh, I think uh, 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 there is objects rather than symbols in this uh, photo. Uh, am I correct? These are not symbols. You, you, see, you see, this house is not a symbol. You said it is a white house. Yes, well, it, it's, it's intended to be factual, um, uh, along with the, the narrative that I've just described. But um, I think that the, the, what's symbolic about the photograph is the fact that I mentioned that the, the, the photograph had been smashed, the glass was smashed in the photograph. And that symbolizes to me the, 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 the breakup and the heartache involved in families being, uh, being treated this way. And so their family is no longer together, but she clings on to that photograph as the only remnant that she has of her former life with, with, her, with her husband and children. Um, and so she takes that with her. Uh, and my, my thought was that it may well be that somehow they, they might have a future together again. And, um, and that's why in the background of the painting, uh, you can see that the, 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 the painting was done, was, uh, was showing nighttime, but there is a, a, a sunrise perhaps, uh, or a twilight um, that, that symbolized hope really, um, but it was uncertain. Uh, and so that that was what was concerning the people of that area. They just had no idea where they were to go or what, how to save their children and themselves, and if they would ever uh, have re returned to having a family again. Yes, yes, and that is uh, the uh, the role of uh, a painting is to give us uh, not what happened only, but what is felt. The feeling of uh, victims is obvious in, the, in this famous painting. It's, uh, I, I had seen this on many websites and uh, speaking about uh, what happened during Bosnian genocide. Uh, one of them is remembering Srebrenica, about uh, the early stages of uh, genocide, ongoing genocide in Bosnia. Other uh, uh, websites and uh, Facebook pages, uh, I discovered uh, putting this in uh, what happened in Predorius. It is uh, telling a lot. And uh, thank you really about uh, for this uh, one, about the fate of uh, survivors. There is a possibility to make a new version of uh, the same family in a new life. If you could... Yeah. Uh, paint a new one about the uh, uh, current status of uh, this family uh, almost 30 years after uh, uh, what happened? Yeah, well, that's an interesting question. Uh, I hadn't thought about painting an update uh, uh, regarding uh, Elvira and and <coughs> what, what happened after she was rescued from the concentration camp and um, the, the International Red Cross managed to get both of the, 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 the Elvira and her husband Jasmine out of the camps and they then met in, uh, in a, a concent a, a, sorry a refugee camp in Croatia where they were where they were sent by the International Red Cross and it was there that they first they, they met one another uh, again um, and it was from there they came to Scotland and um, I, I, and now live happily there. So whilst I, I don't know if I'll do another painting of, of, of this event, but, but what's important and worth saying, uh, um, Iman, is that um, 
in, in 2021, uh, along with Remembering Srebrenica Scotland, we managed to put together uh, a small exhibition of artefacts about the war in Bosnia. And Elvira very kindly um, provided us with some very personal items um, for uh, for display in that exhibition in Glasgow's largest museum. Uh, in fact, this museum uh, was the place where all of the world leaders who attended uh, COPS 2021, the Climate Change Conference, all of the world leaders came to this museum for a formal dinner, um, and it was right that the dinner was uh, was placed beside this small exhibition, and so I, I was invited along to speak to one or two people there, including um, Prince Charles, uh, well then Prince Charles, and Camilla, who are now, of course, the king and queen of our country, and. I told Prince Charles the story of Elvira and her family, um, and he, he was very interested in it. So the, the reason that I mention this, Iman, is because Elvira's story uh, has been told or has been seen by many, many people, many important people from across the world, many politicians and, uh, and leaders of countries. Yeah. And so um, I'm very pleased at the fact that, that her story, at least, has been passed on to others in this way. Yeah, and uh, I'd like to see this, uh, this uh, story is, is one of thousands, more than uh, 30, uh, more than uh, 3,000 victims killed and uh, 30,000 uh, 30, uh, ethnically cleansed from uh, Pridor and everyone in uh, Bosnia during uh, this genocide has a story to tell. They are sharing the common uh, f feeling of pain and uh, torture and uh, etc. But everyone is a unique in his pain. And uh, uh, this is one of the stories we should remember. And as, as we said, it is a culture of remembrance and it is standing against an ongoing denial and um, uh, this is a different language uh, in which your painting is also a universal language so uh, your painting is a, a, a language everyone could understand and feel what happened and uh, know what happened and feel the uh, feeling of uh, these uh, victims and uh, really uh, I'd like to thank you for uh, this uh, marvelous uh, painting and uh, your activity as a forensic uh, technician in the forensic teams established uh, a work that helped a lot uh, during identification of um, thousands of victims uh, during Bo Bosnian genocide. Uh, I'd like to tell also that without the, uh, this early uh, forensic activity, and if they said we are uh, uh, tired or we couldn't continue this, uh, nothing could happen. But you insisted, your teams, uh, all of you, photographer, forensic technician, forensic pathology, anthropology, whatever, all of them insisting, uh, insisted on uh, uh, continuing uh, uh, th their work uh, to reach uh, uh, the myth, uh, missing persons and to uh, identify uh, 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 what happened. Uh, and uh, th this was, uh, uh, was uh, uh, there was a trial of hiding what happened mainly in Bredor by hiding all evidence and uh, still uh, I repeat uh, the culture of remembrance in front of the culture of denial is important now and forever. Uh, it is marvelous uh, and thank you sir for uh, your time and uh, your activities. Thank you Dr. Man. it's been a pleasure speaking to you again. It's a pleasure to me. Uh, thank you. Okay, then. Take care. Yes, same with you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.